Okay, this part right here. So this part of the song kind of alternates. The lead sheet will tell you D, it'll just say D, E flat, which would sound like this. But he's really kind of, he's not playing too much of an F sharp. I mean, the melody's not having that much of it, but it's basically like fifth mode of G harmonic minor. So fifth mode. Uh, let's see if I can do this. your fifth mode, sixth mode. So you have that. So that's that kind of flamenco, sort of like, you know, flamenco sketches, Spanish part, I guess. But it reminds me of another thing. This, this common tone here. So just that part, but a different key, but. So that song, um, Everything in Its Right Place, is going from C to C triad, to D flat major seven, to E flat six. But the C always at the top. And then when they go to the A section, The flamenco sketches thing kind of reminds me of that vibe. If we were to take it to that key. So it's not the exact, it's definitely not the exact same thing, but it kind of, kind of rhymes. So the top note is the root of a triad. Major triad, then it becomes the, the major seventh of a major seventh chord, then it becomes the sixth of a major sixth chord. If you were to use that Radiohead thing, it would really it'd be the fifth. First, it would be the fifth of a chord. That's just an example of uh, a way where sometimes. I'll notice something in one song that reminds me of another, and it's good for me, it's helpful to make that connection. It's kind of like learning vocabulary from somebody from a solo. For me, it doesn't necessarily overtly show up in a composition, like I sit down and go, oh, I'm gonna use that, but you file it away, it goes in there, and it goes in the memory banks, it kind of goes in your things I like folder. By the way, the Inside Outside Saxophone Retreat is happening again this summer. We are back at Wooten Woods outside Nashville, Tennessee. Visit InsideOutsideRetreat.com for more information. We have a cap of 36 players this year, so I know it's filling up fast. InsideOutsideRetreat.com. Check it out. It's a really amazing week. We ran it for five years before COVID happened, and it's really it's really unique. It's unlike anything else you'll ever experience. So it's not for everybody, but it might be for you. Check out the website. So beautiful. And just listening to that, literally, oh, just having that record on is like enough to kind of put me in a, in a vibe where I was talking about this with somebody at a, a clinic recently. A young, young player was asking me how he could sound more like Joe Henderson. And I, and I said, listen to a lot of Joe Henderson and just play along because 
there's transcribing very specifically. There's a lot of different ways we could talk about transcribing, like figuring out the notes and writing them down. And then there's maybe this is more akin to like tracing, but I'll do this. I'll just listen and play along and wait for certain things to catch my ear. There's an example right here. Right here, right here. So right there, I know that the chord is, for me, C major. So listening to the way that Joe plays that. I love that because he's emphasizing the fourth on a major seventh chord. It's like no-no number one in harmony, in jazz theory. It's like definitely don't do that. And he's sitting on it. He's basically going, this is Ionian. So much interesting color, so many things going on in there that you can pick up and it's not, it's not the kind of transcribing like I was doing with that Brecker clip um, in a prior video. So much of my tone concept was influenced by, I really, really thinking back on it, specifically about this record and a lot of Joe Henderson from that, that period of time. Who'd have thought Joe Henderson, Kinda Blue, Miles Davis, Radiohead, Connections. <laughs> Thank you. 